Many elderly people and those with cognitive disabilities rely on personal care services to remain in their homes and maintain a basic quality of life. Medicaid provides these services, but unfortunately, there are major vulnerabilities in the program. So our investigations have revealed billing fraud schemes as well as instances of abuse and neglect. Um, in some of these cases, the personal care services attendants have actually um, caused patients to be hospitalized and other less severe degrees of patient harm. But in some of the most severe instances, these patients are actually dying. OIG has been making recommendations to CMS in order to implement program integrity safeguards that will hopefully help prevent and detect some of these fraud schemes and these other instances of abuse and neglect before they occur. Over the years, CMS has not implemented any of OIG's recommended changes to improve the personal care services program. With Medicaid expanding and a growing number of people in need of these services, OIG issued an advisory to Medicaid in October of 2016. Our greatest concern are the instances of abuse and neglect to our beneficiaries. These are some of the most vulnerable beneficiaries in any of our programs. And so these cases are the ones that strike home the most for us. Um, we've had instances of beneficiaries who've been neglected for days or weeks on end by personal care services attendants. In one particular case, a beneficiary was neglected for days by their attendant. And it took an actual concerned neighbor to come by to check up on the beneficiary. And when they finally gained entry into the house, the beneficiary was found laid over, having fallen out of their wheelchair, covered in their own dried excrement. This is a situation that no beneficiary should ever be in. In 2015, states reported nearly one-third of Medicaid fraud convictions involved personal care services attendance. 71% of those convictions were tied to fraud. 29% involved abuse or neglect. OIG believes the program will remain vulnerable to fraud and the beneficiaries receiving personal care services will remain in danger of receiving substandard care. So some of the recommendations that we're highlighting are number one, to establish minimum qualifications for personal care attendants. We want to make sure that the individuals that are providing care to our beneficiaries are qualified and that are properly trained to provide these services. Beyond that, we'd also like for states to establish and enroll personal care attendants and assign them unique identifying numbers so that later on when claims are submitted, we can track that attendant through the claims. I mean, really what we're trying to do here is we're trying to establish these safeguards to protect you know, the most vulnerable population out there. And we want to make sure that they're receiving the services that they deserve and that they need and that we're not putting them at risk.